Hello everyone, we are in the Chernobyl RBMK simulator by Simgenix, and in this video I will make a test to see what does it take to bring this reactor to a critical runaway. A critical runaway is a situation in which the mm, neutron activity growth is so fast that you cannot control it and it goes above the limits of the reactor design and it blows up things. So to start this demonstration, I already have the reactor close to criticality. Now the logarithmic indicator of activity is at minus 12. So I just need to pull rods a little bit more to, to be close to zero. And when we are close to zero, then I will pull rods in a fast mode. Now I'm in slow mode, by the way. I will switch to fast. Then we see when I switch from slow to fast, how the slope of the neutron rate changes in the trend chart here. So let's pay attention not to overshoot zero, otherwise we'll start the test before expected. Minus one. <clears throat> okay, I will hold it now. It's still negative, it means we are not yet critical. And this means if we wait for long enough, the neutron rate will go below zero. So the chain reaction cannot be maintained if we don't reach criticality. In this situation, which I will call, call it source range, because we are not yet in the range where the neutron flux of 1% appears on the screen, I will start pulling rods and I will time it with a watch. And then I will make tests to see how close I can get to 100% of neutron flux without creating a meltdown. And of course, to do this, I need to pull rods. And after a given point, I need to insert rods. Because if I hold, then the, new, the high neutron rate will continue increasing neutron flux and overshot 100%. So I just need two indicators here. I have the core status. So I, here I will monitor fuel temperature. Uh, Xenon is already at 0%. I use cheat engine. Why do I have two windows here? OK, this is a past instance. So you see it's zero. And I also have the steam drum flow to see if the water is getting too hot because in principle I'm not creating any heat in these experiments because the, the transient of neutron flux will be very fast and it will go back to zero very fast when I insert rods. But maybe if I do this several times at the end I will start heating water. and. I don't need the alarms. I want to show you the diagram. Actually, I'm just using the two offline core cooling pumps. It's the one, two one in red. For a startup procedure, this is not the correct setup. We need to have the, the recirculation pumps on, and we need to go through all the circuit, like condensate pumps, feed water pumps, etc. But for because I'm not expecting to produce heat, I just do it like this so it can be faster. So I will leave this in one corner just in case. And let's start the first test. I will pull rods, try to time it at the moment when I insert rods back, and then I will do this several times to get close and closer to 100%. So I pull rods, at the same time I start my stopwatch. We see the spike in the neutron rate. We see neutron rate at 30%, 39, 48. I insert rods now. Okay, so we saw a very mild increase in neutron flux and need, I need to pull rods back otherwise I will stall the reactor. Let's leave it just before criticality. Here. Minus 0.23, it's fine. So, as you saw, my timer says 9 seconds. So pulling rods in a fast mode during 9 seconds and inserting them back creates a mild increase of neutron flux. I think, I didn't see the number, but I think it was around 5%. The problem with this test is that I don't have a precise value of what is the neutron flux at the start. Because this scale is linear, it's not logarithmic. Below, below the precision of 1%, I don't see where is the neutron activity. 
So this makes this makes this experiment not very scientific actually, but I will try to do this several times and I expect the neutron flux to be more or less the same at the beginning of each time because if I do the same every time, I guess the neutron flux should not be too far between su successive experiments. So let's do it the second time. I reset my timer and pull rods. Neutron rate 20%, 30%, 47%, 57%, 68%. In rods. And this was exactly 9.8 seconds. I will pull rods back to recover reactivity. And I think neutron flux was around 20%, if I'm not wrong. And you see the, the cyan line, it's the neutron activity here. So I will hold it now. Now we are critical. So maybe a better way to do this would be to start from a 1% neutron flux. Like this, I can have certainty that we do all the experiments with the in same initial setting of neutron flux. Yes, this, this will be better. So I will insert a bit rods to start from a below criticality state. Pull a bit, hold it here, reset my timer. Okay. Oh, neutron flux just went to zero, so I don't like it. I don't like it. Let's pull a bit rot. Can I get 1% consistently? I think it will be difficult. Maybe you can do another thing. I will pull rot and I will start the timer when the neutron flux hits 1%. Maybe this will be a better procedure to be more objective. It's still not good because neutron flux and activity doesn't need reactivity doesn't need to, to have a linear dependence. But it's an additional control I have on the initial settings. Okay, so I will do like this. I prepare my timer, I pull rods without starting my timer, and when neutron flux is 1%, I start my timer. 1%, I'm preparing to insert rods back. Neutron rate of 77%, I insert rods now. And this, and this was much better. This was much better. Neutron flux reached 50%, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. We see the spike in the cyan line here. And how now it's going slowly down. I forgot to stop my timer. Okay, so I will repeat it. I like this procedure. It's much more scientific. I will insert rods a bit. Hold it now. And pull rods now. Preparing to start the timer. One percent. Neutron rate fifty percent, sixty, seventy in rods. And we see neutron flux reach sixty-four percent. If I'm not wrong, you see the spike higher than before, and it was exactly seven point five seconds of withdrawal. Okay, so I think we are getting more and more consistent with our test. Let's see how close we can get to hundred percent. And you see the water in the drum is heating up a bit. It's at 61%, uh, sorry, 61 Celsius. It may be not only because of our experiments, but because there is residual heat from the previous run. So if this starts to boil and to generate pressure in the main steam line, I may be forced to start other pumps in the system. So probably this would be the end of this experiment. 
okay, I will start, stop this. We are almost at criticality, almost at zero. Oh, excuse me. Someone called me in the phone, so I was like half an hour with the video pause, by the, but the simula simulator was running. So you can see that the drum temperature went down to 21 Celsius. This is good, because it means the residual heat from the previous run is not really big. So all the heat that we saw before, it's coming from our experiments. So I will pull rods a bit to try to reach a bit higher neutron rate, because probably we are very low now. Okay, we'll hold it. Okay, yeah, we are close to 1%, so that's fine. I will insert roads and do another test. Hold. Let's hold it here. Just a bit negative, so it can go below 1%. And... We will do another run. Okay, I will not wait it for to go below 1%. It's already 1%. So I will start my timer at the same time I pull rods. 3, 2, 1. Newton rate increasing. 20%. 37, 45, 54, 60, 70. Okay, and this was too far. So... The high I got with meltdown was like, I think it was around 60% of neutron flux. Now uh, this was a run of 12 seconds, and that one was around 9 seconds. So this 4 seconds difference. I remember that, the, that one, the neutron rate was at 60 something percent. And at that moment I inserted rods and I, I stabilized the neutron flux to to 50 something percent now i decided okay see if if inserting rod at neutron rate of 60 percent reaches neutron flux of 50 percent let's do one step more so let's go past 60 percent which was like 70 something percent so neutron flux will hopefully and get close to 100%. But the problem is the initial condition here. My criteria is just be around 1% of neutron flux when I start my timer. But this is not precise enough because around 1% has 1% of precision, can be between 0 0.5 and 1.5, and this can be, a, this is like 100% of error. So this can really miss shot the the final value of the neutron flux. So that was just the test that, uh, that I was I wanted to run. And actually, if you watch my previous videos about uh, Werner Heisenberg and why Hitler didn't have the atomic bomb, this is what is described in the Weren, um, what is it called? Weren, I'm not German, so it's difficult for me. Heren Waffen Amt report, which is the report written during the uranium project in Germany, in which they describe the malfunction of a reactor in which you have a critical runaway. And this was misinterpreted by historians, thinking that this was the description of a bomb. And it's very recently that someone went through this report, through all the technical details, not actually a historian, but an actual scientist, and he said, this is not the designing of a nuclear device like a bomb. It's a nuclear reactor that malfunctions and you lose control of the reactivity. So you saw in around 9 seconds you get to 50% neutron flux starting from 1%. With 12 seconds you get a meltdown. So the conclusion of this test is between 9 and 12 seconds is the time needed to bring this reactor up to nominal power in terms of neutron flux. Of course, here I'm dismissing uh, everything concerning turbine connection and all the other hydraulic systems of the plant. And I, I was just running this with the, these two external core cooling systems to remove a bit the voiding of the reactor. Because this reactor has a positive void coefficient, it means the more voiding we have, which means boiling, 
the more reactivity we have. This makes the exponential growth even faster when we start boiling water. I did not have time, time to look at the voiding indicators here and here, but I expect them to have been around 10 or 20 percent at the moment of the meltdown. So at that moment, the contribution to reactivity must have been pretty important. It's to be done to repeat this test with the one, two or three pumps in the loop one and loop two recirculation loops to see if removing this positive loop feedback can mm, get things more controllable and we can get closer to 100% of neutron flux with this technique. Because we have several feedbacks, for instance one is the positive void coefficient, but we have the negative fuel temperature coefficient. The more hot the fuel is, the less reactive it is. So this is good because it stabilizes the reaction. And actually, Werner Heisenberg thought that uh, explosion of a reactor was not possible at that time because of the stabilization, of because of the thermal effect. Actually, it's known that what his calculations were a bit wrong because he misinterpreted the Doppler effect uh, absorption. But... But actually he was right in the fact that there is a negative loop or a, or a stabilization of the reaction by the th thermal increase of the fuel. But still you see that a critical runaway is possible if you, even if we have this negative reactivity because the neutron rate can become very, very big in a few moments and the fuel doesn't have the time to catch up with the temperature, so we can have a really huge neutron rate and neutron flux before the fuel has time to heat up. So that's what can cause an explosion in a nuclear reactor like this if we run this kind of experiment. Okay, so this is the test. I am plan to do this to get some experience and to do some additional tests emulating things that were written in the Heren Waffen Arms report by the Uranium Club, which were the German scientists working for Hitler. So I hope I, you like this video. See you in the next video. Bye.